Let's do one more example of graphing an absolute value. All right, this one's a little bit different. We've got x plus 3 minus 2. All right, so again, remember that the f of x, the function of x just means y. So y equals the absolute value of x plus 3 minus 2. So let's go ahead and plug in some values. Okay, for x and y. All right, so we're doing a little bit of guesswork, but let's just go ahead and do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if I do negative 2 plus 3 minus 2, so negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1. All right, then we'll do the absolute value of negative 1 plus 3 and then minus 2. So that'll be negative 1 plus 3 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2. Minus 2 is 0. Okay. Then we'll do the absolute value of 0 plus 3 minus 2. So 0 plus 3 is 3. Minus 2 is 1. Okay. Absolute value of 1 plus 3. And then minus 2. So 1 plus 3 is 4. So 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, and then the last one that we've got here, 2 plus 3 is 5, and then minus 2 is 3. All right, now you may remember from our previous video, if I go ahead and plot these points, I've got negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3. You may remember that an absolute value is supposed to have kind of a V shape. Okay, now since it looks like I've got the right hand side here, I'm going to choose some numbers that are going to be a little bit earlier to see if I can figure out where the other side of my graph is. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put in negative 3. So absolute value of negative 3 plus 3 minus 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. Minus 2 is negative 2. All right, so let's put in negative 4 because that's negative 3, negative 2. So now we'll put in the negative 4. Okay, again, I want to try to figure out what that left-hand side looks like. That's why I'm putting in some earlier numbers. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Take the absolute value of negative 1, and you get positive 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So negative 4, negative 1. Ah, there we go. See, it's going to start showing up now. If I put in negative 5, you can probably figure out. So negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Minus 2 is 0. Okay, and so you can probably then figure out what it's going to look like. We have the right side that looks like this. And we've got the left side, which will then look like this. Okay, so there's the graph. Let's now state the domain and range. Remember, domain is the x values. Okay, so domain... Again, we want to pay attention to the x values and what values x can be. Again, in this situation, there's not any numbers that you can't put in for x. You can put fractions in for x. You can work this out. You can put really big positive numbers into this, and you can work it out. You can put really big negative numbers into this, and you can work it out. Even if the stuff inside is 0, which we found earlier when the negative 3 plus 3 was 0, it's still possible to work out. So there aren't any issues, and so x equals all real numbers. Okay, the domain is all real numbers. Now let's look at the range. Okay, the range are the y values. Now we look and we say, well, it looks like y can be anything that's positive, right? Because I've got a y value of 0, 1, there's a y value of a half, right? All the y values above 0 look like they're taken care of. And so it does keep on going up and up and up. And so any positive y values are going to be okay. So if we look down below, okay, well, there's y values here still. There's still y values, still y values. But then once I get to this point, I stop having y values. Y cannot exist below this point. Okay, that point is at a y value of negative 2. And so that means that the range is that y has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. If y is not negative 2, if it's below that, then it's not in existence, right? You can see the space here. As the lines are both going up, they're never going to come back down here. And so it's impossible to have a value for y that's less than negative 2. So the range is that it has to be bigger.